Perplexity AI has just released their version of Deep Research. It was published on Valentine's Day, it seems like, and it is basically like OpenAI's Deep Research model, where the AI model is going to take time to think and it can create a report for you. It says here it excels at a range of expert level tasks from finance and marketing to product research and attains high benchmarks on humanity's last exam. So as you can see here, you just have to select deep research. I have I have it pulled up right here. So there indeed it is. And if you've seen some of my previous videos, you know that I tested the OpenAI and Gemini deep research model based on work from my own PhD dissertation on supermassive black holes. And so I'm going to give it virtually the same prompt as I did the Google and Gemini deep research models just to have sort of a fair comparison here. And looking at this animation here, it's kind of cool because it says that you can export the final report to a PDF. They have an example here. It doesn't look like this document has any graphs in it though, so that's interesting. I, want, I really want to see some of these models be able to produce graphs eventually in their in their analysis. I'm also asking it to make a table of sorts, so maybe it can it can do that. Looks like on Humanity's Last Exam Perplexity Deep Research is, well, comparable, maybe a little bit worse than OpenAI Deep Research, but that's still really, really good. It's doing really well on this simple QA benchmark. All right, so I guess that's that's it for this page. So I guess we might as well just go ahead and dump the prompt into perplexity and hit deep research and just see what happens. So let's see here. This is my prompt. And I wonder, is it going to ask me any questions? Because that's what OpenAI's deep research did and Google's as well. They asked me questions to make sure that they knew exactly what I wanted it to do. It's actually just going to go right ahead and and do it. So, okay. It's not asking me here. It's just going to go. It says here, I need to search for review articles or key studies published around almost first year in Operation 2013. That's correct. They discuss molecular gas dynamical black hole mass measurements. Okay. Several relevant studies. Okay. I still need to lo locate a compiled list or table. Yes. So I actually asked for a table of the current measurements if possible because that would be super useful. Making tables is one of the most annoying things in grad school I think when you're writing papers like for example the final section in my dissertation here has this really comprehensive table that had all the measurements up until that point this was a pain to create such a big pain to create and it'd be so nice if AIs could just make this table for me so in the meantime we're just gonna wait here and see how it does and then I will take a look and read its output so I guess we just wait in the meantime I think for me this is so amazing though that it can parse through all of these different articles all of these different web links and process all of that information to create some sort of report at the end i mean you have to remember as a human before we had ai we have to do all this ourselves we have to go through all these papers like in this reference list i had to individually find all of those papers just you know read the paper look at the references and just manually search for them. But now we have these tools that can do this. And hey, it's found my paper. Wait a minute, come back. I want to see it. Yay, this is my paper right here. Woohoo! So that's good. Oh, and it's done. Well, what do you know? All right, so how long did that take? I felt like that didn't take that long. It's only been about five, oh, it's only been six minutes since I was recording. So under five minutes here. Oh, it's actually compiling. This is awesome. Whoa, this is sick. Oh, that's not all of them though. Oh no, that's not all of them. Okay, so it didn't get all of them, much like ChatGPT did not get all of them. And actually, this is the wrong year because mine's in 20, this is supposed to be 2024. I actually didn't publish in 2023. There's a 2022 paper and a 2024 paper, but there's not a 2023 paper for me. Okay, so this is cool. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna export it as a PDF so I can uh, look at it more clearly. Okay, so I have perplexities report here. The title is Molecular Gas Dynamical Measurements of Supermassive Black Hole Masses with Alma, A Decade of Advancements. That's already a good title. I'm not going to read it all out loud. I'm just going to read it to myself, and I will just highlight things that I find are interesting or wrong or or things that I, I, I want to comment on. So let's just go ahead and read this. This is, this is true. So all of this is true. These are the limitations we would commonly cite as why it was best to move on from the ionized gas dynamical 
modeling measurements and moving to molecular. So that is good. So the formatting is a little weird here, but this is correct in terms of the science, like resolving this scale, this RSOI is very important. Dust and turbulence are also factors that need to be taken into consideration here. So radiative transfer codes is not entirely correct. These aren't radiative transfer codes. These are these are dynamical modeling. I mean, this is we're really getting into the weeds here, but long story short, this is not KinMS and DiskFit are not radiative transfer codes, just to point that out. So that's an inaccuracy right there. Again, formatting a little weird here. Statistical frameworks, quantify uncertainties. That's correct. Yeah, so it looks like it had a hard time using LaTeX in the middle of the document, or maybe it just got saved kind of weird. I mean, these are all valid relations here, but this is not a comprehensive list of all the measurements. Like, I already know for a fact that it has listed me, which is good, but there's other, there's two other measurements it missed that are, that are published by me that are not there. I can think of a, a few others by Davis and Onishi. I think Smith has a more recent one. So this is not at all comprehensive. I mean, if you just take a look at my table here, it's, it's really missing a lot of the published measurements. So it's interesting. It seems like a lot of these deep research models just aren't able to find all of the sources. They're able to find some, definitely, and you can definitely use this as a good starting point to figure out where you should look next. But this is not completely comprehensive. I also find it interesting that, now that I look at this, I find it interesting that for my black hole mass measurements, they included the uncertainties here, but for the others, they do not. So I don't know what was up with, with that exactly. And I'm actually not so sure this is correct in terms of uh, re linear resolution. Now, I'm going to have to stretch my, my mind here, but I think the resolution, if I'm not mistaken, is, let's see here, 45. Is that correct? So I think for this target, I have my thesis right here, so we can actually just take a look here. So what is the, okay, one arc second is 301. So the resolution for this galaxy is actually 0.3. So we should be getting something that's like 0.31 times 301. So it's about 93. Yeah, so this is not correct. 45 parsecs is not correct. And then 5193, I'm also definitely sure is not correct either. So let's see here. Okay, yeah, so one arc second corresponds to 221. So this also has a resolution, I believe, of 0.3 arc seconds. So 0.3 times 221 should be 66. So yeah, that's off as well. Okay, so that's something to note as well, that the resolution here is actually incorrect. And I think it's safe to say that it's probably going to be incorrect for these other ones as well, though I don't know off the top of my head. I'm also really curious to know if Perplexity Deep Research can make a plot, because it made a table like I asked, but I want to know if it can actually code something up and make a plot in the report. Okay, so this is the prompt I'm going to ask it. Can you please make a plot using Python of black hole mass versus resolution following the table you created in the report? If so, please reinsert the plot into the report and make it available for PDF export. Now, this is not actually a plot you would really want to make. I'm just trying to give it something easy to do because it's already created this table with the numbers that it would use in the plot. So I'm going to see what it can do here. Okay, it says here you need to generate a scatter plot using Python to visualize the relationship between black hole mass and solar masses and ALMA resolution parsec space on the table provided in the report. This plot will help illustrate the data trends and provide a visual representation for inclusion in the updated report. After generating the plot, I will integrate it into the report and prepare it for PDF export. Oh, good. That's everything I, I would really want. It says programming here. Oh, it's using matplotlib. This is a good sign. This looks all, looks all good to me based on the two seconds I looked at it here, but it has the resolutions and the masses that it's listed there. And it looks like it's going to execute that, that program. And I guess we'll see what the plot looks like. It's probably going to look really messy because this is not something you would normally plot. This really has nothing to do. Like these two things really have nothing to do with each other. So it's going to look kind of messy. Oh, it says I've successfully created the plot. Okay. What does it look like? Ooh, that's kind of nice. That again, this plot's very messy because the scales are just completely different from each other. But hey, it made a plot. That's really what I'd like it to do. So awesome. And it's regenerated the report here. And did it put the figure in there? Hmm. So let's see here. Is the plot in here? No, the plot did not show up in there. Okay. So, and the table went away. Oh, so the table is gone and the 
Since your own note on PDF export the plot has been saved as this for inclusion reports or presentations, please ensure that it's embedded properly when generating PDFs from this document format or use external tools to incorporate directly into your final report layout. Okay, so it could not put the plot into the report itself. That's fine. You know, I just, I was curious to know. It's not going to be a huge knock on it. And it did remove the table though. Oh, it says below is a plot summarizing here. Okay, so the table just went away. The formatting is still kind of wonky and it's still, yeah, still has a lot of work to improve upon. Okay, so that pretty much answers all my immediate first questions I have for Perplexity Deep Research. I hope it was an interesting video for you to watch and see just how it performs in this domain that I can somewhat claim I have expertise in. It has a long way to go, but again, this is a very high benchmark to clear in terms of asking it to write a report that can pass the litmus test of an expert in a in a domain that they wrote a PhD in. So still, as you can see, work to be done, but as we always say, these are the worst these models are ever gonna be, and they're probably gonna get a lot better over time. So thank you again for watching my video. Please consider liking and subscribing the video if you thought it was worth your time, and I will see you in the next video.